Hello, Alex Smith here again. Um, welcome to episode six of my warehousing videos. Okay, what stock to hold and how much to hold? These are quite important questions for any business. Remember, you're paying for this space. So the amount of space that you have is finite. There's only so much you can stick into your warehouse. So what stock do you keep? Well, firstly, seasonal goods. Um, you're going to send, spend, you know, more time on the beach in summer than perhaps doing suntan lotion and that sort of thing. So your warehouses will start gearing up for spring and summer ranges beforehand. So when it comes to Christmas, the larger warehouses will start stocking the Christmas stuff, perhaps in October. September, start getting the stuff in. You always work one event ahead. So for Easter, you'll start looking at stuff for Easter by the end of Christmas. Also, suntan lotion happens during the summer, mostly. So you would stock more of that in the summer period and more swimsuits and T-shirts and what have you. And also, have you noticed how come, about well, this time of year, May, April, that sort of thing, suddenly we're inundated with barbecues in the shops and all the paraphernalia and garden furniture and that sort of stuff. Whereas in winter, you can see much more woolly jumpers, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can see much more thick duvets and warm sweets and snacks like hot chocolates and stuff being sold. Whereas if you've got all of your warehouse stocked up with summer goods come winter, not good. You notice in the January sales, for example, there's a lot of wrapping paper. Well, that's because it's cheaper just to sell it off for 15p or whatever than it is to hold something that's so cheap anyway in your warehouse. The storage costs outweigh the sale costs. So whatever you haven't sold, get rid of to make way for the summer stuff that you do need the room for. So you work season by season, in effect. So how do you know how much of each to hold? Simple. You look back at what you held last year and how much you sold in the year before that and the year before that. You look at Tesco's Asda and, and what have you, they've got quite a lot of information on what goes out of the warehouses. Everywhere does this. Shops, um, factories, whatever. You look at your historical usage and you buy in the resources that you need. Now, the problem is, if you have a lot of stock that isn't moving, it's just tying up space in your warehouse. So what you do is you figure out, OK, how long does it take to order this stuff? So when we run out, um, if it takes two days to get here, then really all I need is two days worth before I pick up the phone and order some more or do the purchase order. And that's how a lot of places work. They will perhaps buy in two or three weeks worth of stock to hold in the, in the factory or whatever. And then as soon as it hits a certain point, then they order some more. So that's called just in time. And a lot of industries like the motor vehicle industry, for example, will have you hitting the just in time point, uh, perhaps several days, you know, times a shift or what have you, because they're very reliant on the suppliers turning up and delivering what they say they're going to turn up, deliver. On time. That means that because the stuff is turning up just when you need it, and then as soon as you run out, more stuff has already turned up, you don't need a big warehouse, and it makes more room for factory space. Also, if your um, warehouse is tied up with lots of items that just aren't moving, yeah, you sort of become a hoarder rather than a warehouse. So what you want is a, a few of the items that move slowly, perhaps to the back of the warehouse, and all the stuff that moves quickly to cycle through. Yeah, um, And you, you need a lot more of that. And they'll be closer to the loading doors or that sort of thing anyway. So how you design your warehouse and how much stock? These are important considerations because you're paying for the space and you need to optimise the space so that it's doing the most for you. So have a look at um, Tesco's again. Not only do you have 
if you like how much space you need for your warehouses across the country you also need to figure out what individual shops are asking for so corby for example uh, their tesco's might stock much more iron brew being generalists there but what have you than let's say a london place whereas leicester um higher asian content therefore you would expect much more international foods in the leicester stores and perhaps some of the fashions and stuff perhaps much more halal food so these are important considerations how do they know what each store is buying and, and what the customers want well firstly you've got the individual stock records of the stores and you can tell exactly what's moving and tesco's as to and what have you been doing this for ages so they've got all of that information how many of you though have loyalty cards loyalty cards are your you know you get points on the loyalty cards and that sort of thing so you're encouraged to use them and you're actually giving them a lot of data about you with this data they can make a lot of educated guesses about your lifestyle how many children in your family how many people in your household what you like to do what the other people in the in the um you know in your family like to do spending etc etc now we're moving more and more away from money and cash and more and more into electronic like credit cards and those sort of things and bank cards guess what they can build up a map and a profile of your average spend where you spend it you know petrol how much you spend a time um, where you shop what sort of uh, hobbies and interests you have, what food you buy, what clothes you buy, and so on and so forth. They have a very detailed profile of who you are. Scary, huh? You don't need the Big Brother television, you just have the magic plastic. And they can t tell a great deal about what happens, not just to you, but in particular areas, and what sort of stuff you need to stock up on, what sort of fashions people are buying, what sort of lifestyles. So you can get very accurate information about what to put into your stores. You can do this, as I said, in several ways. One is the just-in-time method that I've just sort of mentioned. Another thing is just, is the bin full? So you have your primary location, secondary location, and you fill up every time you, you know, perhaps two or three times a shift, every time you see the bins are low, you fill them up from a second, you know, primary from a secondary location and that gives you a usage measure as well so you know how much to order and when and what the peak times are whether it's summer winter that sort of thing yeah so stock management is about getting the most out of your warehouse using every nook and cranny there to the most advantage so you've got some of the slow moving stock that the customers occasionally want but your stock locations are cycling through quickly and you're pretty much able to have the stock that your customers want and get it to them. Yeah? And also, it's about control on your suppliers. Making sure that if you are running these tight schedule just-in-time systems, they're providing what you want when you need it. Yeah? Otherwise, the down, uh, if you're, you can't get what you want when you need it, you might have to buy more stuff and hoard a bit, which means that you're taking up, up other locations where you could have other stock in. So, yeah, a bit of a balancing act. It's about knowing your customers, knowing the history of what you've used in the past. Seasonal goods. But also there's another factor as well, fads. When Frozen came out, for example, it was just another Disney movie and they stocked, you know, the um, various dolls and colouring books and what have you to their expected level. But it became the next best thing and they found themselves wrong-footed. So they had to go out and get some more cheap manufacturer turnover quickly to get it into the shops and a very quick turnaround because they got it wrong. They misjudged what was happening in the market. Rubik's Cubes, um, various other things that have been fads over years and the must-have items. And this happens quite regularly as well. And um, Every Christmas, for example, the must-have toy or the must-have item. And people do a lot of guessing and research to figure out, and marketing to figure out, 
what people should be buying this year. Now notice I said should be buying. This is where marketing comes in. You want a toy, but you've got going to need that toy. You want a car. So how do you turn that I, I want a car into I need a Vauxhall Astra or a Ferrari or whatever? Let's look at the clothing industry. If you think about you don't just get them in the shops. There's, there's uh, sort of like the Captain Kirk wardrobe of black trousers and uh, you know mustard top all the time. What you have is fashions and various trends and things. So how do you know what to stock? Well, it's quite simple. They tell us what we're going to be wearing in two years' time. Um, you have all the you know catwalks and various things and this stuff has, has been designed over the previous year by the designers and you get all the buyers there now yes you've got these one-off £20,000 creations or whatever but people like Marks and Sparks and what have you have a look and they will buy in certain things but they will nick ideas and set it up so that you are being um, on trend for what's in the fashion houses and this is a two-year process because it doesn't just happen. You get all the big fashion designers and stuff in the catwalks giving out their items or selling their items to things like the Oscars and various big events. So you can see celebrities wearing them. Then you get the knockoff or the near enough for Marks and Sparks and what have you hitting the shops and jewels and whatever. And that hits the shops two years after the catwalk and the reason they know that you're going to want to buy that stuff and why it's on trend is because they've been doing product placement they've been putting their stock into the things like eastenders or various other soaps and people are aware of them and, I've, and people who are fans of these programs look and see and say ah that looks nice and then they're looking for it in the shop. So they're telling you what's fashionable by the media and the TV and the, the teen magazines or various other bits. And then you have to follow the trend because everybody else is doing it. But to get all geared up for it, what have you, it's a two-year process from the catwalk through to the stocking, the materials that you need, getting it in from China or Malaysia or whatever, getting it produced and developed and what have you. And that's not the only thing that product placement has. You have a look at the next time you are, you're watching the TV and see if there's any particular brands that keep popping up that the actors are drinking from or what have you. Yeah? Product placement is a big thing in films or various other bits. And the manufacturers pay to have their stuff in films and these things so that people are reminded that they need to buy it. So there's a lot of marketing that goes on, not just in adverts, but in every day and setting up things like the TV shows and various other so the products get used and seen in, uh, to remind us that we need to buy this stuff. Consumer economy. One other thing. The high street is changing and therefore how you pick and how you stock is changing. It's going much more to the internet model. So... This has an impact on you rather than having the big let's pick a pallet load for that store and whatever. And that still happens at Tesco's and Sainsbury's and stuff. But what happens is because the high streets are drying up a bit, you're getting much less shop type deliveries and much more individual Amazon type deliveries. Where lots of small items or what have you are posted out. So you're getting a much bigger spread of goods in warehouses now and lots more mezzanine floor picks as opposed to the big pump truck and pallet picks. So this has an impact on what you stock and how you staff. Something to think about. More on that next time. Take care.